I've had made a special pin pointer that um, is going to work in conjunction with the GPX 5000. The problem with the GPX 5000 is that when you detect uh, a, a super deep target, you know, really deep, you put the CTX over the target, it can see nothing. It, it can't give you an iron check because it can't, it, it can't detect that deep. Even, even my lab Matt, Matt's Knox can't even see it. So I've got this special machine that just detects iron. And I've had it made. Cliff, my chief engineer, has made this um, uh, iron checker. Well, it's, it's an iron checker. So what you do is I will go around the field with a GPX. I'll scan for, looking for deep targets. And when I find them, I'll then double check the target to, to see if it's shallow or whatever with the CTX. And if both machines can't see it, then it's got to be deep. Then so I get I then get out the... Uh, the probe and I've called it Probus Maximus <laughs> which I think is a really good name Probus Maximus I'll get that out and I'll put it over the target just to see what metal it's made of so if it detects it like it gives you a signal and it's iron right that will tell me that it's not really worth bothering with but if I put Probus Maximus over the target and it sees nothing then it has to be made of non-ferrous, so like uh, copper, silver, or gold. Woo. So then I'll get my lab back, because he's a lot younger and fitter and stronger than me. <laughs> I'll get him to deep, start digging this super deep hole, and we'll go down really deep to find out what it is. So yeah, it could be, an, you know, it's not going to be a cast iron drain pipe, because I've dug a few of them before. Um, so because it'll detect it, it'll detect the iron. And it detects all iron, you know, anything, anything iron. But it won't, what it doesn't detect is non-ferrous, which is like copper, silver, gold, and all sorts of lovely relics. So um, I'll put some video up now of how it's been going along. Um, and uh, this is uh, Cliff's filming, so not I haven't filmed this. Um, and we'll put this up now and we'll, you, you'll be able to see how it works. Put it on the floor flat. It's to set this up, the easiest way to do it is to put it on the floor flat. Switch it on. And then you have to wait for it to set itself. So it's about 15, 20 seconds. Waiting. Right. Okay. Now on the display it's showing the voltage and it's very battery hungry. Uh, uses PP nines, but they don't seem to last very long. Now, what I've noticed there's a a number on the top right which goes up and down, and the higher the number, the closer it is to the target, as far as I can tell on this. But you have to go on sound. Now, here's a target that I found, and. You can just hear it as you pinpoint. That's very difficult to get an accurate pinpoint with it. But it's reading tw tw minus 20 here. Um, so I'm guessing that's still quite deep. So what I'll do is I'll dig it out to see what we've got. changed again but as I say it's very uh, okay battery hungry it's now 25 that's a brand new battery in that as well Okay. 
Kartal. Out. Ah. And some sort of gate bolt or something, some huge great lump that is. Did you like it? Because uh, when the when the when when we can get back to some sort of normality and I can get back on my fields, be Roman fields and you know, because the weather's looking terrible at the moment. Um, really cold snow and oh, it's been everywhere's flooded um, not very good conditions for the GPX GPX likes it to be a little bit drier because it, it's, it's been it was made for the Australian gold fields you know when it's like a desert basically um, so it's not made for super wet ground so hopefully when I'll be able to get out with the GPX soon hopefully um, we'll be able to dig up some epic treasures right that's enough waffling. Cheers!